The mode phone. Touted as the phone that pays you. But how can that be? How could a phone pay you? Shouldn't you pay to use the phone? Well, sort of. But for a phone that costs $129 brand new, it has some seriously impressive specs that you wouldn't otherwise see in this price point. For example, fingerprint scanner, 4 gigs of RAM, an 8 core processor, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, uh, a 6.5 inch uh, 720p display, Type C, and dual SIM support. There's no way, seemingly, that this phone can cost only $129 and also pay you at the same time, claiming up to $1,200 every single year. Now how can that possibly be? Well, it has a sneaky sneaky trick up its sleeve. And if you've ever seen those ultra cheap phones and tablets that show you ads on the lock screen and every now and then, well this is that taken to an absolute extreme because bundled with this phone is a ton, and I mean a ton, of ways to earn. So you participate in tons of uh, listening to ads, looking at ads on your phone, playing sponsored games, browsing the internet, doing surveys and other tasks, and they pass on a tiny bit of that profit to you. And that's how this phone is able to subsidize itself and cost nearly a hundred dollars where a phone with this kind of specs would probably be more like two, three hundred dollars if not if not more. Now while this is pretty interesting and a lot of people would be quite interested in being able to earn money by just using their phone, really it's more like you get to participate in a ton of sponsored activities and then earn a little kickback. Um, so I'm not really interested in any of that. What I'm interested in is the hardware and being able to use this phone as a normal phone. So my goal today is to unbox this phone and we're gonna see if we can de-bloat this phone to the point where it's close to a regular smartphone, even a slow one. <laughs> Honestly, in my opinion, a huge improvement because you already know that they're gonna be selling all this information and that's how they're earning the money. They're gonna sell everything that they know about you to whoever is wanting it. That's not really my style. So let's go ahead and start by unboxing this device and seeing what's inside the box for $129. Alright, so finally we can open up the phone. Alright, any day now. I will admit, a very satisfying box opening. Okay, there it is. So immediately I'm seeing this invitation to earn. Already they're, they're touting that you can earn a little bit of money from doing the referrals. So that's pretty funny already. We also have our SIM eject tool in here. Here is the setup card. You can go ahead and read that. It wants you to update the phone and install the Mode Earn. Oh, actually it's already installed. Pre-install the Mode Earn app. That's pretty much how you're gonna be able to get all the offers and stuff that will earn you up to $1,200 every single year. You can scan those QR codes if you want. I personally don't recommend it. All right, so here's the actual phone. It's in this, strangely enough, not clear plastic. All right, cool. Here's the device. It is definitely 100% plastic, I will tell you that. A smooth touch plastic, but it is it does feel kind of cheap. I'm sure that these buttons are plastic too. This is the fingerprint scanner. That's just a normal power button. It comes with a pre-installed, feels like plastic screen protector, and it has an absolute chonker uh, chin there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we will see it as when we open up the phone. So meanwhile, let's look at the rest of this. We've got this earn as you go. Here's a list of all of the tasks that you can do. Obviously, sign up bonus. There's uh, music ads. Uh, you can download sponsored games, refer friends, go to the weather app, which I'm assuming has a ton of ads, the news. You can surf the web. I'm sure there's ads there. You can complete tasks, which if you've ever seen one of those like scam type of task lists, it's probably similar to that. You can give surveys, crypto, not sure what that's about. Uh, you can sign up with Fetch and Ibotta. Get a tiny bit when you charge per minute, interesting. You can watch video ads and you can do what they call a daily health check. So there's a ton of ways you can earn, but it just seems really time consuming for the amount of money that you're getting through this. And the currency is their like mode coins, it looks like, on the top there. Interesting. We've got some more paperwork. User manual, how to install the SIM card, 
the parts of this phone. It does have a micro SD card slot, which you don't see a whole lot of. 64 gigs of storage, four gigs of RAM, Android 11. So, you know, pretty solid in terms of hardware that is. Of course, the software will make the phone. All right, so continuing inside the box, it does come with a little power adapter here. Five volts, two amps, 10 watt power supply. So decent, but not the fastest thing in the world. An iPad charger would be faster than this. Uh, it did came, come with a Type-C to USB. It also came with some dinky earbuds. I'm not sure how I feel about these. They, they feel like airplane earbuds, I will tell you that. Interesting, so it did come with a 64 gig micro SD card, so this might actually be worth, this might be worth it just for the phone. You get a free phone with it. It came with a silicone case, all right. Uh, feels like a standard, you know, like Chinese case. It is pretty flimsy, so I wouldn't probably trust this to save my phone in a crash. No, it's better than nothing. So let's go ahead and put this in the case here, see how it fits. All right, sure. I, I get it. Yeah, so enough about that. Let's go ahead and turn it on. What I'm hoping is that they'll be dumb. They wouldn't be smart enough to lock down the bootloader. And if it has any sort of standard bootloader, then hopefully um, I can write a ROM for it and a recovery, but we will see. I, I doubt that's the case, and if it is, it's probably non-standard and very hard to work with, but we will see. Obviously, no one has written a custom ROM for this phone yet. It's literally pretty much brand new. I'm not sure anyone has this or has a desire to, but at least, at the, at the very least, this boot up screen looks like pretty much stock Android. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I don't have a mobile network, and I'm not gonna put any of my sims in here. So we're just gonna skip this. Should I connect it to my Wi-Fi? I don't know if this is a good idea. All right, just typing in that password, I can immediately tell that the haptics on this phone are subpar to say the least. They feel like a phone from 10 years ago. I'm not gonna lie. It's totally one of those rotational mass spinners. But yeah, so far from the setup screen, it seems like a pretty much stock build of Android. I'm sure they put a whole boatload of bloatware and junk on here. That is what the second part of this video will hopefully address is deep loading this phone using the a little tool I found online. It looks like it could not connect, that's fun. This is all Google stuff, so I'm not too worried about this. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the fingerprint scanner. Who knows if they're sending this to somewhere, but probably not. But you know, to err on the side of caution, I'm gonna skip it. Already just out of the box setting up the device, it's already asking me for my de demographic information. Uh, can we skip this? All right, we'll just do that later. It looks like it didn't like my Wi-Fi network that much. Nice, so we finally got into the phone. Eh, well, not that many apps on here. So we're back. Um, it wants me to finish the setup, and you can see I pulled out the keyboard here because I'm just gonna copy APKs to this phone. I'm not gonna connect this to my Google account, at least not in its current form. I will note that this screen protector is like, I don't know, it just feels cheap. I guess it's been a while since I've used a plastic screen protector, but it just feels like excessively cheap. I would like to test this fingerprint scanner at another point. Okay, and we've completed setup. So yeah, so as far as the software goes, usually I keep my phone on vibrate, so I will go ahead and do that for this phone too. Anyway, as far as the software, it's sort of somewhat close to stock Android. Um, they've put a very light skin on here, obviously made the app icon square. Yeah, not bad. Could be a lot worse, I will tell you that. On the home screen here, they do have the suggested apps and games that they want you to install, and I'm sure they'll give you the, the mode coins for it. So yeah, this this row of apps are actually just suggested, so are these. They're actually not installed onto the phone, actually. As you can see, there's not a whole lot on here. So I'm gonna put a couple of apps on here to test this phone out and see how it performs, and then I will come back to you. So I noticed upon connecting my computer, uh, it came up as Unisoc phone. I've never heard of that before but clearly it's not their own hardware. This is, they're not manufacturing this phone. This is probably just a generic Chinese smartphone that they license out and put their brand on and obviously put their own software on. Not surprised about that one particularly. I've never heard of Unisoc though. I noticed that out of the box, the time zone came configured as China. So while I was running these um, ADBs, I was scanning through the apps list here, if you can see it, and honestly, it's pretty clean. I expected a lot more junk and stuff on here. There are a couple of things that you wouldn't see otherwise, like there's this one weather app, which has a ton. I'm sure it has a ton of sponsored stuff. There's some other stuff that's kind of a little bit sus. There's this app stack, which is uh, like a widget used to show you suggested apps on the home screen. There's this app services app. I'm not really sure what that's about. 
I'm gonna see if I can disable this and if everything still works, but not totally sure about that one. There's a camera app which is reporting zero bytes used, so interesting, we'll have to test that out. Featured apps, again, uh, to show you some suggested apps and games. There was this internet browser, and this is the wackiest part. It is exactly how you expect it. It's totally filled with ads, and already it's sending me notifications of ads. So that's definitely gotta go. And of course, the core of it is this Mode Earn app. This is where you complete all the surveys and offers and watch ads and whatnot. But other than those uh, suspect apps, Honestly, it looks pretty clean. I haven't took, taken a look at the system apps yet to see if there's anything sus in there. Honestly, it looks fine to me if you chunk all these apps, get rid of them. Um, honestly, I think it would be fine to use as a normal phone. Okay, so we finally got CPU-Z installed. It was so weird. I don't think it's this cable. This cable has worked forever. But what would randomly happen is um, on my computer, I would type ADB devices and it would show up fine. Okay, sure. Then I would try to install the app using ADB install. No devices found. ADB devices again, it's gone. Then, literally one second later, ADB devices again, it's back. And I would run ADB devices over and over again and randomly it would show up and randomly it wouldn't. Not sure what's going on there. Might be a measure put onto this device to prevent it. Or it could be my cable. I don't know this cable. Um, it's I've had it forever. Um, but yeah, okay, so I finally got the CPU-Z installed here. Let me see if you can see that a little bit better. Um, so interestingly, it's not showing a particular brand name for the processor. It's just saying it's an ARM Cortex A55, 1.6 gigahertz octa-core processor with a PowerVR GPU. Yeah, so interesting that it doesn't show, usually it does show like MediaTek, Qualcomm, uh, Exynos. It's a 720 by 1600 so full H or HD plus display 4 gigs of RAM 64 gigs of storage manufacturer is called Skyworth interesting well, I will note that there are a lot of sensors here might be another one of those little money making tricks maybe they're tracking these sensors probably I wouldn't be surprised um, a ton of these sensors. All right, so I finally got Geekbench installed. Let us run the Geekbench. So let's run the CPU. All right, finally it finished, and here are the results. Um, so the device was listed as Skyworth MEP2Q421G. Interesting. Well, if you want to take a look at the results, they are bad, but not horrible. Um, as in, I was expecting a lot worse. So put, to put that into perspective, the single core score of 147 is pretty similar to the Snapdragon 625. Um, I actually had this phone, the Moto Z Play had it. This one got a 147, whereas the Z Play got a 145. So very similar there. That phone is pretty slow. This phone, a little bit faster, especially in the multi-core 759. That's not bad. Z Play got 543. Definitely could be worse. It's, it's not fast by any stretch of the imagination, considering modern devices these days are getting, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 400, 4,000. You'll probably feel it. I mean, I'm feeling it just whipping through the UI here. Not bad. Could be a lot worse. So honestly, this is not bad of a result. All right, but now is the time you've been waiting for. It is time to deep load this device. And the tool I'm gonna be using for this is the Universal Android Deep Loader GUI by GitHub user 0x192. Um, it's this repo right here. And this tool is awesome because it's super easy to use and um, it gives you a good idea on what apps are able to be successfully uninstalled. Um, now, this is a pretty obscure device, so I wouldn't be surprised if it, wouldn't, if it didn't catch everything, but it would be a good start um, to get, especially the stuff that I might miss. So, we're gonna go ahead and run this. Um, I already downloaded the binary here. So right now I'm running the deep load process for this phone and for the most part I'm able to just pick and choose the recommended packages it thinks I can uninstall successfully. Now there were two packages I needed to uninstall manually and to do that I needed to run the command they listed on their FAQ. Now the problem was that I needed to figure out what the package name was for these two apps, the Mode Earn app and their internet browser, since these were probably custom made for this phone and weren't on the list. 
What I ended up doing to fix this is I used this all-in-one seven zipper app. It has a ton of features and what I did is I just looked through the app list and it told me the package name. So after that it was all uninstalled and everything was clean and good to go. All right, so I have successfully de-bloated this phone. It is now very, very clean. So all of the offer stuff, their <laughs> core mode earn app, all of the suggestions app that shows the app suggestions are all gone, uninstalled. Now, to be completely technical about this, they are te the app files are technically still on this phone since you can't uninstall a system app without root access. But what we can do with this ADB tool is that you can prevent the app from loading for any user. Basically, no user has it installed including, well, the only user on this phone. Um, so effectively it's uninstalled, still there, whatever, it can't load. So honestly, very happy um, after doing the deep bloat, super clean, uh, skin's a little bit weird, I will mention that. I, I don't know how I feel about these square icons, they're overly square. So it is running a slightly modified version of Quick Step, which if you don't know is the sort of a code name for the old Pixel or Nexus launcher. And over the years it's been updated to fit the Pixel style. So yeah, it is it is pretty nice, I will say that. It's very familiar to a lot of stock Android users, like people use the Pixel or Nexus way back when. It even has integration with uh, Google Feed. If you're signed into a Google account, I'm not, but looks like it works. Honestly, yeah, I think if you were to buy this phone literally just as a phone, not to do any of the earning garbage where, where you sell your entire personal identity for what, a couple hundred dollars. But yeah, as a, as a $130 phone, you know, solid, honestly. Shout out to the guys that develop the Universal Android Deep Bloater tool. True lifesavers doing awesome work over there. I'm gonna leave a link to their GitHub in the description and you can even run it on your own phone to deep bloat some of the apps. Good to go after I did run all that uninstall. Very happy with the way it's turned out. Performance, uh, a little bit left on the table. Not bad, um, but certainly not good either. Yeah, so I think that's all there is to say about this phone. I think I'm gonna use this as a secondary phone, possibly, you know, for development. It's a modern phone, super cheap, $130 after you run the deep load. Yeah, so that's I think all I have to say about the mode earn phone that I will not be earning me any money. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button just below this video. If you'd like to watch more from me, I've picked out two videos on the left just for you. If you'd like to subscribe, there's my icon on the right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. No one watches this far in the video, do they?